Class Act from 1992. Let's get into the technical. This movie was directed by Randall Miller. It was written by Cynthia Friedlob and John Simper. Uh, this movie had a budget of $7.5 million and it brought in $13.2 million at the box office. So it made its money back a little bit. Um, let's talk about uh, this movie when I used to watch it as a kid. Like, this is a movie that I used to watch a lot as a kid. But, like, I remember, I remember this movie used to be on HBO a lot. So any opportunity I had to watch it, I would. Because, like, any kid that grew up in the early 90s, like, I like kid and play. Uh, they had a cartoon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had a cartoon. You know, like, it was like, oh, wow, they have a cartoon, so they must be something. Uh, and, like, they were also, like, the rap group that was, like, the gateway to you listening to real hip-hop, you know? <laughs> because, like, uh, hip-hop, hip-hop is something that I found on my own. Like, my parents didn't really listen to it. Uh, like, my mom liked salt and pepper, but, like, that's it. You know, like, that's, like, the only rap stuff that she liked. My dad didn't really listen to rap at all. Uh, like, my parents listened to more, like, R&B, funk, and, like, pop music more than anything. My dad listened to a little rock music. He wasn't, like, a fanatic over rock music either, but he listened to a bit of it. Um, so, these guys, along with, like, MC Hammer, were, like, my gateway into hip-hop music. Uh... My first, uh, my, like, my first hardcore rapper that I liked was Ice Cube, like, Death Certificate. Death Certificate was a fucking classic album. Uh, I remember listening to Death Certificate, uh, a, a friend of mine had it, and I don't think he should have had it, because we were, like, we were, like, fucking six or seven years old. <laughs> we were, like, six or seven years old listening to Death Certificate on the playground. He had like he had a Walkman, and he had uh, he had death certificate on tape. That's how old. That's how old I am. I was listening to death certificate on tape. It was like, like that's how old I am. Uh, but like we were listening to death certificate on on tape and i was just like because like i didn't catch on america i didn't catch on to america's most wanted yet but death certificate was like the gateway for me and it was just like okay yeah i I like i like rap you know but uh (laughs) but yeah man that that was a fucking classic for me open up the world to hip-hop for me uh but anyways let's talk about this movie let's see how i like this movie as an adult this movie is very weird. It's a very weird movie because it's in between House Party 2 and House Party 3. And that always confused me. I'm not sure if that confused a lot of other people, but that always confused me because as a kid, I thought this was a House Party movie. I'm not going to lie. I'm like fucking seven years old. What the fuck do I know? Right? <laughs> So like I, I actually thought this was a, I thought this was like an alternative house party movie. I was like, oh, this is house party. This is house party like two and a half or whatever the fuck. But um, nah, this is not a house party movie at all. And uh, once again, you got kid and play playing teenagers. And if you thought they were too old to be playing teenagers in house party. They are way too old to be playing teenagers here because here they're in their fucking early 30s. You know? <laughs> they're in their early 30s in this movie. But the plot of this movie is uh, loosely based on The Prince and the Popper, which is like an old uh, story. Uh, Chris Kidd Reed, uh, plays Dun- Duncan Penderhughes a super genius who is trying to get into a prestigious college and uh chris play martin plays michael blade brown a juvenile delinquent who is who has to graduate from high school in order to stay out of jail 
the first the, like the first time we see Blade Brown on screen is actually pretty fucking hilarious to me because <laughs> they put this wig on him. You could tell it's a wig. Like there's a wig on him that makes him look like a black sideshow Bob, and I couldn't help but fucking laugh. I couldn't help but laugh because it looks so damn ridiculous. It looks so ridiculous. Uh, they quickly get rid of it though. Like, uh, they they shave his head because like I was looking at this, I was like, um, whenever you can, like look up uh class at uh blade brown hair. I don't know, like maybe that'll give you an image. It's like when you first see him, he's got like, like I said, he's got like these, this 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 sideshow Bob type hair. It's it's fucking hilarious, bro. Um, we get eight minutes into the movie, eight minutes, and I already see something that made me go, "What the fuck?" You know? <laughs> so after. We set up a Blade and Duncan's uh, story arc. We learn about these characters and what they, what they, what their goals are and stuff like that. The next scene of them is on the first day of school. Like they show the kids filing into the building. You know, like they just get rushed into the building. Uh, but there's two scenes that catch my eye early on in this movie, and they both have to do with the school secretary. Because in one scene, you have a student blatantly grab her ass. Like, he just grabs, like, a handful of her booty. And I have to say, like, she does have a very rotund backside. Like, it's fat. It's fat, fat. P-H-A-T, fat. It's it's smackable. It's spankable. But uh, anyway, (laughs) but in that scene... She looks annoyed by it, and she even, like, vocalizes her annoyance with it. But right after that scene, in the next scene, she's looking at student files and getting horny about it. Like, she even says, she even says, look at this fresh jail bait. Like, she says it like that. She's like, ooh. And she starts, like, shivering. She's like, ooh. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what the, like, what the, what, what kind of what type of movie is this? <laughs> and like, what we know, what, what we know now about female teachers and female faculty having sex with the students, like, this is a very weird scene to put in a movie. Like, you couldn't put this in a movie uh, right now. In like the past, what? This is a this is a scene that couldn't be done in like the past what ten years? Because like. There's so much, there's so much, like, female teachers having sex with underage boys going on right now. Like, this would not be funny now in 2024. It would definitely not be funny. But, like, it's just, it's just an odd scene. Like, I don't know if this was supposed to be a deleted scene because it feels like a deleted scene that got put in the movie by mistake, but... I might be wrong. I might be wrong because there's another scene that kind of supports this scene that I'm going to get to later on. Uh, But anyway, uh, Duncan and Blade's files get mixed up. So people think that Duncan is Blade and Blade is Duncan. Uh, Blade ends up Blade ends up in the honors class and uh, Duncan ends up in a class with the hood kids. And like I said, going back to going back to that goddamn horny school secretary, like the teachers are just as fucking horny. <laughs> like the teachers are just as are just as horny. Rhea Perlman is in this movie for a split second. Rhea Perlman, Rhea Perlman plays one of the honors teachers, and like she immediately starts getting horny for Blade as soon as she sees him. It's like I'm like. All the teachers in this universe need to get locked up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're goddamn, they're goddamn fucking sex deviants, is what they are. Like, luckily, Blade is played by a thirty-year-old man and not a real teenager, or else, like, this would be a very different movie. Like I said, couldn't do this today. This would not, this would not fly in twenty twenty-four. Um, Dougie Doug is also here. 
Remember him? No? Well, anyway, uh, he plays a character named Popsicle. Like, he's supposed to be funny, but he's not funny. He's, like, the... All he does is just... All he does is just fucking, like, talk loud and suck on a lollipop. That That's... That's popsicles character like it's nothing then we meet the school bully named wedge i forget that actor's name i didn't get him uh but he does wear a very ridiculous ass fucking outfit like this nigga is wearing a fucking a halter top (laughs) he's the bully and he's wearing a halter top like he looked like he got his whole outfit from fucking forever 21 or some shit yeah like I'm like I'm he's supposed to be the bully I'm supposed to be fucking scared of him when like this dude is dressed like a fucking soul like a female soul train dancer <laughs> I'm not I'm not fucking scared of that uh but Wedge becomes uh Duncan's rival throughout the whole movie um uh, I guess this is a good of a time to to talk about the love interest because both Duncan and Blade have love interest uh so since Duncan is in the hood class, he gets the hood girl, Demita, who is played by Alicia Rogers, and Blade gets the good girl, Ellen, who is played by Karen Parsons. Now, the girls don't know that Duncan and Blade are two co- completely different people. They have no idea that uh, Duncan is Blade and Blade is Duncan. So, like, they get they get mixed up like they don't know but in a way like these matchups make sense because like opposites attract it's an opposites attract thing but like there's also like if you kind of like looking if if you want to dig into it real deep because some people might dig into it real deep and it ain't that deep but i'm gonna get deep with it like uh, there are a lot of components to unpack in these relationships. Like, you have a class and colorism component to unpack, because, like, you have a light-skinned guy as a nerd, and you have a dark-skinned guy as a thug, first off. But you also have a light-skinned girl as the good girl, and then you have the dark-skinned girl as, like, the which pretty much, like, you might call the hood rat. You know, like like she's the she's the 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 the, the rebel. The, she's the 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 kind of like uh, move her neck, twist her neck, wave her finger type of type of girl. You know, she's that. Uh, which I'm not gonna lie, out of both the girls, uh, I kind of took a liking to Demita <laughs> over Ellen. Uh, like Demita got like this 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 dark skin jessica rabbit thing going on with her that i find is like super sexy you know like i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know like she, she she's she's like a fucking she's a jessica rabbit come to life like she is super she is super fine but uh, you know <laughs> i looked that actress up too alicia rogers because like she hasn't been in anything in decades i looked her up she's actually on instagram and she still looks good like she's 40 I want to say I think they say she's 49 years old now she's 49 years old and she still looks like she did in 1992 she looks fucking amazing (laughs) but 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 yeah but like in the in in the black community most times like opposites do attract is like the girt girl would like the thug and vice versa you know like it works kind of works like that in our community you know but anyway let's talk about the underrated comedic timing of Meshack Taylor as Duncan's dad like there's this other storyline with uh Duncan's parents like they think that uh Blade is Duncan's is Duncan's a gay lover (laughs) which comes out of nowhere because like normally I would think this shit would be corny like a a Oh, oh, I think he's gay uh, storyline. You know, like, normally I would think that would be corny, but Meshach Taylor plays it so well uh, with his facial expressions like that. 
I think it's like one of the funniest things in the whole movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like it's actually pretty fucking hilarious because Meshack Taylor sells it. It's fucking hilarious in this. He, he's under. He's so underrated in this movie. So underrated, man. Like he's fucking hilarious in this movie. Meshack Taylor as uh, Duncan's dad. Uh, another thing about this movie, like this movie tends to switch up characters' ages at will for convenience of the story because these underage teens sure do go to the club a lot like this this movie can't make up its mind about the ages of these characters they don't know whether they want them to be teenagers or not it like they don't like it's just like make up your mind are they teenagers or are they adults make up your fucking mind they should have like Maybe, like, put these kids in, like, college or something. But I guess that would make sense because uh, they could have been a community college. Like, you could, ex-cons can go to community college because Blade's supposed to be an ex-con. But, like, ex-cons can go to community college. You know, like, you'd be like, oh, you got to graduate community college or you going back to jail. You know, like, it could have been college. But also, um, everyone's favorite movie mom is here, uh, Loretta Devine. She's a... Uh, well, playing Blade's mom, uh, she's she's a bit younger here. Like young L- L- young Loretta Devine, kind of fine. Though. You know, like she 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 kind of fine. I was like, I was kind of looking at young Loretta. I was like, damn, I'm like you you looking kind of good. <laughs> you know, <what> I'm <laughs> like I don't know how she got tight cast as a movie mom, but like she. She does a good job at it. Like every time they cast her as a mom, she 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 knocks it out of the park. You know, even though like probably here she's like fucking 35, but you know, <laughs> but she 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 does a good job. Um for what it's worth, Wedge is also like a good foil for Duncan because he just spends like the whole movie getting his ass kicked. <laughs> That's his whole purpose in this whole movie is to be a bully that gets fucked up that's <laughs> by these two guys that blade hired like every time wedge goes after duncan like these two guys show up and beat the fuck out of him every time <laughs> and they think and everybody thinks that duncan did it but it wasn't duncan it was those two guys it's fuck it, it's pretty fucking hilarious that's pretty fucking funny um Polly sure shows up out of nowhere because it's the early 90s and he's popular uh there really is no reason for him to be here uh out of nowhere like this movie like just gets a main villain (laughs) it's a drug dealer named meek who's played by tommy ford from martin like he like he just comes out of nowhere like he literally comes out of nowhere and i guess wedge i guess wedge sells drugs for him like like I guess like that's why Wedge was there to, to sell drugs to the kids and all of a sudden like like Blade Brown comes around like Duncan Penderhues as Blade Brown comes around and starts beating the fuck out of him quote unquote and so like uh, Mink is like man like you you and you imposing on my business you know like you you uh you fucking up my business by getting your ass kicked all the time but yeah it's like it's a it it's a dumb it's a dumb storyline right there it was like when you get like this guy that just comes out of nowhere and he's a drug dealer but anyway uh Pauly sure is fucking unbearable in this movie like I'm, I'm 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 seriously glad he's not famous anymore like i can't believe i used to like this motherfucker as a kid you know like, i look at him now as an adult i'm like this nigga corny i was like i can't believe i used to like this shit I'm gonna have to start doing some Pauly Shore movies soon too. Like I'm dreading the fuck out of that. Uh, I already did one actually. I did Jury Duty. So, and that was a shitty movie. That was a f- fucking turd of a movie. Um, and of course, this wouldn't be a kid and play movie if they didn't rap. The song is kind of whack though. Like the song that they rap is just fucking garbage. It's, I don't like it. Um. The wax museum scene is still my favorite scene in this entire movie because like it's very reminiscent of a Hanna-Barbera cartoon with everybody like running around and getting into silly hijinks and shit like I like that that shit's fucking hilarious it's still a fun scene 
overall, this movie is slightly better than House Party 2. Like, it, it at least made me laugh a couple times. Like, the story is all over the place. Uh, like, they really can't make a decision on if these characters are teenagers or adults. It was like, they can't make up their mind about that. Uh, Chris Kidd Reed and Meshach Taylor are the MVPs of this movie. Like, they're the only ones in this movie that really kind of commit to their characters. Um, Alicia Rogers does, too. Karen Parsons. Karen Parsons is barely in this movie, but she 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 commits. Play just doesn't give a fuck, and Dougie Doug is just terrible. Uh, you know <laughs> but yeah man but like the two characters i did like i did like duncan pender hughes and i did like his dad like they those two characters were were kind of good uh this movie does have a lot of bad adr like this is the second movie in a row that i've watched that has had bad adr (laughs) like action jackson from last week had a lot of fucking bad adr in it too uh, like it felt like I was watching a badly edited BET movie. <laughs> you know, like, you know how they cut out all the curse words in BET movies. That's what I felt like I was watching here. Uh, the only other thing we're looking at is like Demita's fine ass. You know, like that's it. Like other than that, you could probably skip this. Like if you wanted to, like it's a it's a good movie to have on in the background and not pay attention to. That's what it is. Um. Uh, I give it a 3 out of 5. Join me next week when I will be reviewing 1989's Harlem Nights. Until next time, peace.